want to thank the lord that <clears throat> i want to thank the lord uh, for giving me one more opportunity to share the word of god um like probably a few weeks before uh, i had shared about assurance of salvation i have given you a few verses so the verses that i had shared was uh, from jude uh, the sorry one chapter verse 24 where we learn that the lord is faithful to keep us spotless i'm just telling the key key alone, okay in john 5 verse 24 we learned those who believe will have eternal life okay <clears throat> john chapter 10 verse 24 jesus said who the father has given nobody can snatch anybody from the hand of the lord we also read hebrews 7 verse 25 we have the lord almighty who is jesus himself who is our interceder who intercedes for us who is actually praying for us who is the only mediator and then i want to focus on the next verse which i told that was philippians 1 verse 6 now or not i request all of you if you can write down it will be helpful and uh, you will remember more even if i share the notes and you know, it is easy that you know what you write you will remember more it says philippians chapter 1 verse 6 being confident so paul is telling i am confident about something you know uh, to the church of philippians that this very thing he who began a good work in you will complete it until the day of jesus christ now i want us to understand few basic principle of christian life okay now when pepin was praying towards the end he used a term okay lord help us to be transformed okay there are a lot of uh, christian terms which sound very familiar but we are not aware what it really means. transformed is one of them and today we are going to talk about what is transformation <clears throat> salvation is another one so there are a lot of terms which we use so casually we don't know the depth of it but before getting into that i actually want to talk about that particular verse okay now <clears throat> when you hear someone pray like like what you heard today where pippin is praying like you know sorry maybe i'm using a name saying that lord help us to live a holy life somewhere there is a feel that okay there is something so much of effort i need to do <clears throat> it's a very painful process it is a very difficult process you understand that's a, uh, the thought that comes to our mind this is very difficult task you know it is so difficult but somehow i have to live holy and then because of that there is no joy it is always i am on an alert you know like oh you know i i take one small step and i'll fall there's somewhere more than a joy it looks like a slavery you understand so i want us to understand this verse very carefully before even be talking about it the one who started it is jesus who started a good work good work is joyful good work is full of celebration you understand god who made heaven and earth it is so beautiful your christian life is beautiful i want us to understand that, even before me teaching anything your holy living your walk with the lord is the most joyful thing that anybody can do you understand you are not doing any favor to anybody including the lord almighty you are doing the best favor that you can do for yourself you got it so i want us to understand that otherwise this looks like very heavy load that you know you cannot oh what is this you know all sort of things christian life is beautiful i i, I want us to understand that. it is beautiful there's nothing like living holy there's nothing like being like christ you understand so that needs to for a moment i want that to dwell deep into your mind and heart this is the best thing that i can do in my life because this is the best version of me okay 
you know, the other day <clears throat> at home, we were talking and I was telling, as you get closer to the law, haven't you noticed those people are so likable? Haven't you noticed that they're so lovable? They're so trustworthy. You want to be around them. And I was telling my wife, even between us also, when our relation with the Lord is so close, it's so beautiful for us to be together because we have become more like Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? So I was, I want us to understand. Otherwise, all these teaching, you know, I need to just reorient everything. So what is transformation? That's today's topic. What is transformation? How do we know we are truly transformed? There are so many lessons. I want to talk about four lessons just to see if we are truly transformed. Okay? <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 to 10. Lesson number one. How do I know? We are truly transformed. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 to 10. Paul is telling, so we walk by faith, not by sight. See, Paul is starting saying that we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident. Yes. Well, pleased rather to be absent from body and to be present with the Lord. Therefore, we make it our aim, whether present or absent, to be well pleasing to him. Okay, I'll come back to that. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things that is done on the body, according to what is done, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we persuade men that we but we are well known to God. I also trust are all well known in your conscience. I want us to understand. Verse 11 looks like a scary ways. Verse. We all have to stand in front of judgment. That looks like scary thing, right? Oh, I want to stand in front of judgment of God. But Paul is telling that is an information. But the principle of transformation is in verse 9. I love to please God. You understand? You are not living a transformed life because you want to go to heaven or you want to escape judgment. You want to live a transformed life because you love Jesus and you want to live a pleasing life to the Lord. You understand? Huh? Men and women who got married or children, you have small children. If I tell you, how do I know you love them so much? If I tell you, make a statement across the world, you'll know this is right. When for us, their happiness is more important than everything, that's expression of love. We all agree, right? Their happiness is more than everything for us. And that's our expression of our love for them. You understand? If I love my child so much, I want my child to be happy. If I love my wife so much, I want her to be happy. And seeing them happy makes me so joyful because that's an expression of my love. You understand? When you are living day to day to please God, it is not to escape judgment, but that is because you love the Lord. When you sin, if you are totally aware, you are making God sad. Or are you thinking you will go to hell? You understand? There is a difference between moralistic learning and a transformed lifestyle. Transformed lifestyle is, I, I, I love being pure in my heart because Jesus is happy. I will do anything to make Jesus happy because I love him so much. You understand? Are you transformed? Your actions to please God should be on the foundation of your desperate longing love for God. I love Jesus so much. You know one thing? Then pleasing God is a joy versus a burden. You understand? Pleasing God is a joy versus a burden. 
Is it burdensome for you? Christian life has become such a burdensome thing for people that people even forget to smile. You understand? If I tell you a student who's passionate about research, he cries to go to research lab, what will you tell him? To study more or to be happy or what will you tell? And start loving what you're doing, correct? Is that what you'll tell? Start loving what you're doing. If a man is coming and grumbling, saying, oh, she's asking this, what will you ask her? Make her happy or tell her, love her? Love is the foundation of everything. Now, if you read that verse, you will understand it differently. Okay. Therefore, we make it our aim. Understand? In one translation, it says, my ambition. My ambition in life is one thing. I am present with you or I am absent with you is to please Jesus. That's true transformation. Point number one. True transformation is for people whose ambition is to please the Almighty God. You getting what I'm saying? Following? Let me read one more verse. Colossians <clears throat> chapter 1, verse 10. Paul is telling him, writing these things to you for one thing. That you may walk worthy of the Lord. Why? Fully pleasing Him. You understand? Fully pleasing Him. You walk worthy of the Lord because you want to please God. You got it? And, and one more thing. When you said pleasing God, also remember, that's the greatest favor that you can do to yourself. Because when you're pleasing God without your knowledge, you are being transformed. You understand? Whenever you're trying to please anybody else, you are living a compromising life because you're not living for yourself. But when you're pleasing God without your knowledge, you're being transformed to be like Him. Got it? Ariel? I want us to understand what is truly being transformed. Okay. That's one. I want you to read. Uh, so that's point number one. Second thing I want to talk. See, that's why if you read uh, Titus uh, 2, uh, verse 11, okay, definition of grace, you know, if you actually look at that, you will understand where Paul is again talking about uh, Titus 2, verse 11. It says, For the grace of God that brings salvation. That is appeared to all men. So grace of God gave you salvation. You didn't do anything. You are saved by grace. But the next verse it says, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust. You understand? Moment grace of God came into your life. There is a transformation inside you where you tell no to ungodliness and you tell yes to righteousness because you know that is pleasing to God. Got it? Point number one. Point number two. Romans chapter 12. All these are very familiar verses. Okay? Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Again, I told, how do you know you are truly transformed? That's what we are learning. How do we know we are truly transformed? Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 is the most probably preached verse. Okay, But sometimes we miss the essence of it. Chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. So I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. You understand? So those are loaded words. It says, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is a re which is your reasonable service. What is this all? What does this all mean? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. Paul has simplified it in the next verse. It says, and don't be confirmed to this world, but be transformed. You've heard that? Be transformed 
by renewing your mind that you may prove what that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. There is a renewing of mind that needs to happen. At your heart, your ambition is to please God. In your mind, there should be a renewal of the mind. You should not think like the world. You understand? There is a renewing of mind. Okay. How do you renew mind? How do you renew mind? Hmm? A diabetic patient. What will you advise him? Hmm? Take less sugar and exercise, right? Uh, probably take medicines. What will you suggest a sinner? Take less what? Sin. <laughs> that means, cut off, listen to me, cut off every entry of your sin into your mind. That's a first step of renewing of mind. Renewing of mind has three steps. Listen very carefully. Cut off the source of filth. Did you hear what I said? Cut off the source of of filth. What do you mean by that? The gadgets that you look, the way you look, where you look, what you look, all that sources has to be cut. Got it? Filth in small scale or large scale, everything is filth. Got it? Oh, that is such a good serial. But there are some few bad words and few inappropriate touchings. Filth is filth. Cut the source. Cut the source. Huh? Do that. Number two. <clears throat> Focus and spend time for the right thing to come in. Focus and work on getting the right thing to come in. Time is precious. You should know how to redeem your time. You understand? What do you spend your time on? Okay. Now, one of the things is reading the Bible. I'm not talking about Bible. I'll come as that as a third point. See, we are not just reading the Bible a lot, right? We spend so much of time on other things, right? Talking to people, traveling, going. Make sure that your mind is on the right things. I'll tell you always, you know, two believers meet. If, okay, let me tell a different example. A person who's actually working on carpentry, but he's practicing always plumbing. What do you say? This guy's focus is incorrect, right? You talk about Jesus an entire week. You never spoke about Jesus other than the time you come for fellowship. Spend your time on focus thing. I, I, I like what Ravenhill once said. A jerk in a jaguar is still a jerk. That's what Ravenhill said once. Okay, And then he said, junk goes in, junk comes out. So make sure that your focus, the time that you spend, you know, how you use your time. What you let things into your mind. You know, there should be fasting that this complete week, you know, probably. I will not see any news. I won't see anything. Just take a break from everything. The world will still run without you. Don't worry. The world will still be very safe without you. It's okay. It's absolutely good. Gossips, you know. Proverbs says that even keep away from angry people. You know, like. You understand, because Corinthians says bad company corrupts good habits. The third thing to renew your mind is to have strong Christian disciplines. Okay, Having strong Christian disciplines. Reading the word, study, fasting, pray, all that. But that alone will not renew your mind. Remember that very clearly. The other first two aspects is also very important. Cutting the source of dirty things. Pointing to how you use your free time, then focus time. You understand? Filth, free, focus. What are the three keywords? Cut filth. 
utilize your free time properly focus on biblical principles but most of the time we think <laughs> if my focus time is correct free time and filth will automatically work no 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 you have to work on both you got it you need to work on both don't make a mistake of it you have to see you have to do an analysis how would how was filth coming into my life is that when i am actually keeping on going through youtube shorts how was it coming different people is different cut the source correct cut the source everyone is different okay everyone is different in free time where are you using got it please make sure that where you use your free time okay is it 3 hours movie 6 hours cricket where is your free time going i'm not asking you to cut it be intelligent in using your free time third one your focus time you should be very careful and focus time should be planned okay be very careful focus time has to be planned you need to plan your time you know how you read your bible where you read your bible and all that got it one more verse i'll read and then uh, go to the third point second corinthians chapter 3 verse 8 i just want you to read uh, second corinthians chapter 3 verse 8 sorry not 8 was 80 okay but we all with it says the last portion behold as in a mirror of the glory of the lord are being transformed you see again that word transformed into the same image so when you renew your mind you are being transformed into the image of jesus you getting what i'm saying this is not an automatic switch okay this involves work you got it pleasing god is your ambition and on your mind you need to work on it you need to work on what you spend your mind on remember filth your free time your focus time if you set that correct i'm telling you it says you will be transformed into the same image from glory to god glory to glory just as the spirit of the lord you will be transformed to be like him okay now you come back and read romans 12 you will understand it better let me read that verse once more i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that you present your body how, how do you present your body so all here in your mind as a living sacrifice holy acceptable to god which is your reasonable service do not be conformed to this world you understand don't spend all your time on filth planning for your free time if possible focus time that's normal christian life you need to have right christian life. you understand that is cut the filth plan your free time carefully and have a proper focus plan focus time transformed and renewing your mind that you may prove that what is good and acceptable and perfect will of god okay third one second peter chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 second peter chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 this is the verse this is the reason why i took this topic uh, and uh, recently in a place i was sharing the word of god two elderly people after the message came and asked my wife i heard about transformed life what is transformed life you will not know i was taken aback so much thinking that did i not cover it was it not that obvious from that time i had been thinking yeah. about it you know and then god led me to this verse okay second peter chapter 3 verse 10 to 12 here he's talking about judgment and what happens to the world but the day of the lord will come as a thief second peter chapter 3 verse 10 in night which 
in which heaven will pass it with great noise and the elements will melt with fervent heat. This whole earth will pass away. Earth will go away. Heaven will go away. In Revelation 21, it says, new heaven and new earth will come. Both earth and the works that are in it will be burned up. Therefore what? You have to be scared? Is that what it is? <laughs> He's telling. Therefore, since all these are going to be dissolved, all, all these things are going to be dissolved. What manner of person you ought to be? See, what a classic question. Peter is telling, you know, when all this is going to be dissolved, the earth, everything, the Mount Everest, everything, you know, Niagara Falls, everything is going to be rolled away and burned. What person should I be? Be a person whose holy conduct and of godliness looking for and hastening the coming of the day of the Lord because the heaven will be dissolved, being of fire and the elements will melt away and with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we according to the promise look for heaven, new heaven, new earth in which righteousness dwell. Paul Peter was telling, hey, don't worry about anything. Everything is going to be burned up. But for us, conduct your life in holiness. Holy living. You understand? Holy living. First Peter chapter 1, verse 5. Peter is again telling over there, but he who has called us is holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. You understand? The third principle of transformed life. A living or conduct yourself as a holy person. Again, I'm so scared to talk about all this holiness and all this. You know why? It looks like a responsibility of yours. You understand? You understand? It is not a responsibility of yours. It is much beyond that. It is the expression of your love for God. You understand? It is because you are transformed. Do you understand? Holiness without true transformation is so difficult. Or you will hate it. You getting what I am saying? It should be driven by transformation. You understand? Transformation. Have you heard about uh, kids who went for electrical after three years? They never liked it, and then they changed and they went into nursing. Okay, I have. We have a friend like that, and she's so happy over there because that was what she wanted. So, are you telling engineering is bad? No, no, no. It's what you want. Holiness is beautiful for a transformed person, a truly saved person. You understand? Holy conduct and righteous living is beautiful and such a joyful for anyone who's truly transformed. That's what I was asking. Are you transformed? Did the Lord touch you? Understood? If he touched you, it's different. It is different. Have you heard God's men pray? God, if nothing else is there, also give me a pure heart. Oh, what? Really? How did he pray like that? Even if the entire world is taken, God, all what I want is you. I just want to be righteous, Lord. Huh? How is this possible even for people to pray like that? Lord, you take everything what I have. Everything I don't care, but I just want you. How did David pray, Lord? Lord, you know, don't take the Holy Spirit alone from me. Just clean my heart and create in me a new heart that you will be. Don't, don't hide your face from me. Why? This is desperate love of him. You understand? That's all. What it is. You fell in love with the Almighty God. The result of transformation. Let me read one more and then we'll end the thought. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. To six. Colossians chapter 3. I want to read two portions. Colossians chapter 3, 1 to 6, and Galatians 5, verse 16 to 24. But we'll start with Colossians. And Pippi, I'm assuming that you're writing these things. Share these verses. I want everyone to you know, look at these verses. Okay. Colossians 3, 1 to 6. Uh, Paul is telling this Colossians church. In this you are raised with Christ. Seek 
the those things which are above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god set your minds on things of above not the things of the earth okay <laughs> recently when you say i heard a man of god would say that most of the christians are so heavily focused that they are earthly totally useless no that's not what i'm saying okay and then i heard a one anti tele okay i will tell this in malayalam <clears throat> probably people will translate for you anyway devamakkal kartavil hrudayam koduthu ipo hrudayam illatha pravarthi mathram avaru kaanikkarullo yanasa devamakkal kartavil hrudayam koduthu pesha hrudayam illatha pravarthi mathram kaanikkarullo paul did not mean that set your mind on things of above for you, you die your life is hidden with christ in god when christ who is our life appears then you also appear with him this is the key point therefore put to death your members which are on the earth i want us to understand this very clearly holy living is beautiful but holy living is a war you understand it is a battle because you have fallen you are born into the sinful world and you lived according to sin and this world has fallen and you have a carnal nature and you need to put to death it is not easy holy living is not easy therefore don't give up you understand it is a marathon i always tell everybody christian life is not a sprint it's a marathon my dear friends when you sin and fall please get up confess purify yourself and keep running okay i used to be so foolish now also foolish only when i used to come to the lord i used to say god this time alone once more forgive my sin i will never sin and i used to write in my bible june 6th i will never sin anymore at one point i was so ashamed to look at my bible there are so many verses were dates like that i've written so many times one more time one more time one more time one more time <laughs> you will again fall don't worry about that but you will grow you need to actively participate in the battle to put to death your carnal nature it says therefore put to death your members which are on earth fornication uncleanness passion evil desires covetousness all this put to death what is put to death means what is put to death it is not outside it's inside i want you to understand that this is not outside this is inside that's what we are that's what we are other day um, i was reading deuteronomy deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 1 2 3 it says that i tested you in the wilderness so that you will know what is there in your heart you understand i'm telling you if somebody hurt you so badly and you are so angry at him unless somebody hurt how will you even know that bitterness is inside you you will never know it you got it so god will allow some situations in your life to see there are some filth which is down inside you need to put to death you getting what i'm saying god permits some difficult situations in your life and my life where the worst inside comes out because god wants us to put to death god this god wants us and why we can see it only when god permitted that you agree unless god permitted how will you know it so loving father permitted some situation in your life so that you will realize how miserable you are inside how many times i have actually cried out saying god wow this was in me this is inside me i can't believe lord that this was inside how do i overcome this is a battle holy living is a battle it is joyful 
it is renewing of mind it is pleasing god it is conducting in a beautiful manner it is joyful celebration but it's a battle too it is a battle it's a warfare don't give up fight galatians 5 verse 16 to 24 i don't think i can do justice to this portion but let me read a couple of it please go meditate on this the problem with galatians 5 you know 16 to 24 is you have heard so much messages on it that you don't focus on it properly you understand many of you have heard so much of message on it that you you don't you don't focus on it. you think that it's not you okay galatians 5 verse 16 i say walk in the spirit what is walking in spirit that you should not fulfill the lust of flesh ah huh? beautiful walking in spirit is not to fulfill the lust of flesh so what is there lust of flesh is a reality it is there for everyone and everyone needs to fight you understand none of you are exempt from that <laughs> excluded from that all of us are in the same thing, but different as you keep growing lust of flesh will slowly die 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 now now you have a question what is lust of flesh paul is brilliant okay paul is telling for the flesh lust against the spirit the spirit against the flesh these are contrary you understand contrary it's a warfare to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish so what do you wish what do you wish every man every woman want to do the most filthiest thing if you are not in trouble no difference anywhere because pleasure is a reality and outside the boundary we think pleasure is more pleasurable therefore that is your basic desire that's your basic nature that's my basic wish but that's fighting against you you need to overcome that your wish changes your ambition changes your desire changes but was it but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law now the works of flesh are this is evident which is adultery fornication you see the list uncleanness all that jealousy outburst of wrath selfish ambition dissensions heresies envy murders drunkenness of which i have beforehand told you in time those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god do you do these things listen very carefully do you do these things partially many of you might be we some of you might be struggling for some of the things but there is a drastic difference between practicing and accidentally falling there is a difference between pleasurable intentional action versus accidental fall you fall into which category which category pleasurable intentional way of practicing will not inherit the kingdom of god but accidentally unintentionally you might fall sorry you will fall but as you grow the child when she's or the kid is trying to walk the kid falls right slowly falling reduces agreed falling reduces once walking better 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 christian life is like that but think the kid fell once and saying that no if i get up i'll fall therefore i won't get up how does that sound some of you are like that i can't overcome this therefore i won't get up and walk and the oh no this so oh, i can't because i'm basically like that no you're not basically like that you are in the image of christ but who are we next to us but the fruit of the spirit <laughs> the fruit of spirit we jump directly to us 22 we love 22 now our problem is that we look love i have joy i have peace ah sometimes long suffering no kindness i have goodness yeah faithfulness yeah gentleness yeah self control a little who asked you to start at 22 
22 is the result of overcoming 16 to 21. You understood? 22 is a result. Kid studied so hard the whole year. Got 100. Nobody gave him 100. 100 is a result. 22 is a result of walking with the Lord. 22 is a result of warfare. 22 is a result of committed Christian life. But we are trying. I should have love. I should have joy. Four things about transformation I took. I'm done. One, he started a good work. Who started a good work? Jesus started a good work. Therefore, it is joyful. It is joyful. Some of you, just think of the best company you, you know in your trade. Okay? If you're a doctor, the best hospital. If you're an engineer, the best engineering firm. If somebody is giving an admission there or a job offer, how will you look at it? Oh, I got an offer in Google. Oh. Or, I don't know. Whatever is your field. How will you treat that job? God Almighty started a work in you. How do you treat it? Oh, salvation. So do you have to go to heaven. I'm telling you, no transformation has happened to you. No good work has started. You understand? Four things. One, your desires are transformed. Your ambition becomes pleasing God. Number one, what is it? Your desires are transformed. Your ambition becomes pleasing God. Number two, your mind is transformed. You become heavenly focused. I said three things. Filth cut, free time, be careful, focus time plan. Number three, your dedication is transformed. Holy conduct becomes your lifestyle. Your dedication is transformed. Earlier, you might be dedicated to cricket. I don't know. You might be dedicated to so many things. Good or bad or ugly, I don't know. But now you are dedicated for holy living. Holy conduct. Number three. Number four. Your actions are transformed. That you get into a battle, a warfare with sin. So four transformations required. <clears throat> your desires are transformed. Your mind is transformed. Your dedications are transformed. Your actions are transformed. Got it? Once more. Your desire is transformed. Therefore, your ambition is to please God. Your mind is transformed. You become heavenly focused. Your dedication is transformed. Holy conduct is your Longing. Your actions are transformed. You know you are in a battle. You have to put to death all that filth what is there. We all have it. That's why Jesus kept on telling, I have overcome the world. Come to me. You will also overcome the world. He set an example. He set an example for each one of us. The world is going, becoming more filthier and filthier and filthier. The Lord is looking for a demonstration. God's power. The greatest demonstration of God's power is God's children living a holy life. You understand? Let me tell one small thing which I heard. <coughs> I heard a man of God telling Cornelius was praying. Angel went over there and said, send someone to Peter's home to call him. Angel knew the gospel. Why should Peter come? Angel could share the gospel. No. 
God's plan is for people to preach what they practiced. Peter knew what was to be saved. God will use each one of you mightily when you practice a transformed life. God will use you to transform people of the world when you live a transformed life. It is not your preparation of messages or oh, checking Google commentaries, everything. It's all good, no problem. <laughs> God doesn't value any of this. What God really values is your transformed life. When you're truly transformed, you go say, God is good. It will prompt people. God bless you. Amen. Any questions? Any doubts? You can 